We did a story last week with uh, Ben and Jimmy about whether we in the media should be talking about ISIS when they do these propaganda videos with the beheadings and, and the burnings and all the other awful stuff. How much we should actually talk about it because that, does that just strengthen them? Does that strengthen the recruiting, et cetera, et cetera? Well, now our Justice Department apparently is going to go after people who are promoting ISIS on social media. Uh, we've got a little more info for you. John Carlin, the Assistant Attorney General for the National Security, said that officials could try to blunt ISIS's violent PR operation by trying propagandists as terrorists. He suggested the Justice Department could bring prosecutions under the law against providing material support to a terrorist organization. This may be the first time a U.S. official has ever said that people who assist ISIS with online media could face criminal prosecution. Okay. On its head, that sounds pretty decent, right? We don't need them to be using our tools like Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and things of that nature to promote this horrible stuff. On the other hand, uh, we all talk for a living. We talk right. about these things, we report on these things, et cetera, et cetera. This seems like a slippery slope for someone like you, right? Right, so I'm not a big fan of slippery slope arguments, but I think that when you start passing policies that criminalize and prosecute people for simply promoting a terrorist organization through commentary, it could be really dangerous. And if it's commentary through social media, under what these officials are asking for, hey, you know what, you're in big trouble. You could be prosecuted. I don't know if you're going to be tried for treason. I don't know exactly what the charges against you will be. But at the same time, people are allowed to have their opinions, even if they're opinions that you disagree with, even if they're opinions that you find extremely violent or destructive. So, for instance, we allow the KKK and white supremacists and neo-Nazis in the country to say whatever it is that they want to say because we protect their speech. Right. Now, actions are completely different. So if you're going out of your way to recruit people uh, into ISIS, if you are actually doing something to physically help ISIS, I think it's a different story. But I think commentary and speech should be protected, even if it's something that you disagree with. Yes, I'm 100% on board that. And there's a difference, of course, between free speech and calling for violence against people. Um, right. But what do you think about the slippery slope thing? Because to me, it seems like, yes, we might report on it. I might think it's important that someone knows what they're up to so I could tweet a link to an article. That doesn't mean I'm supporting them. If anything, I want to show people this horrible stuff. Uh, but then there's the slippery slope that the government could be like, ah, are you promote? What are you, what are you going for here? Well, yeah, I mean, there is an important differentiation, which Anna just made. But at the same time, I I'm not sure if I buy this. Like, it seems like it's more posturing than actually fixing a problem. And then right. there's also the idea that uh, legislature usually moves way slower than technology. And then we have uh, a, a problem because of that. This seems like it's a little bit in the opposite direction, like it's too much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think that the timing of this is also weird? Like, I feel like we live in a time when nobody trusts the government to do the right thing anyway. The government's yeah. spying on us, all that stuff, NSA and all that. So the idea, like there isn't enough trust, there isn't enough cachet right. in what the government's doing to be like, oh, we trust that you're gonna deal with this thing properly. The timing is interesting because we live in an age where the government gets to do things without real authorization, <laughs> right? So we're seeing certain executive actions when it comes to foreign policy without congressional approval. And like I think that, that war that's, in Syria, yeah, for example. Exactly. That we, so yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. problematic to say the least. But I think that the slippery slope is definitely possible in a situation like this, especially when in the past we've done stories about people who have been prosecuted for, let's say, posting rap lyrics on their Facebook page, right? right. Uh, officials will make the argument that they're promoting rap violent, not rap violence, gang violence, that this, this is dangerous, that they're actually going to carry out what they're saying in the lyrics. But it's speech. And, yeah. and you really need some hardcore evidence to prove that someone is going to carry out a violent act or that someone is inciting violence. Yeah. So to that point, do you think we need to have like a real debate about what free speech is in this country and what freedom of expression is? Because I feel like with the Charlie Hebdo thing and everything else, we're not debate, we're not really talking about what really, most people I don't think understand the, de the difference between what you say and then inciting actions, like mm -hmm. things like that, yelling fire in a movie theater. Like I feel like we have to have like a real discussion about it, but we don't, and then as you're both yeah. saying, then the government can just go ahead and be like, oh, we're gonna do this little ISIS Twitter thing and who knows where we end up. Yeah, I mean a lot of it is, seems like it's reactionary to, you know, just weird things going on. Um, I also think people don't really understand the difference between free, freedom of speech and freedom of expression, which yeah. one of them protects you from uh, 
you know, the authorities and the government, and the other one is just kind of being a dick, and one of them's <laughs> legal, and one of them, you know? Yeah. Right. I think another really good point is the fact that a lot of Americans don't understand what it means to be protected by free speech. So, for instance, um, if a company decides to fire you over your speech, they have the ability to do that, right? It is a private company, it is a and private they're allowed company. to do that. Free speech protects you from any government action or, you know, uh, strike back if if you say something that they don't like. Right. All right. What do you think? Is this a slippery slope to the government controlling the internet even more than it already does, or are we actually going to help stop ISIS through means like this? Let us know in the comments right down below.